and welcome to this month's Tech Track service video. I'm your host, Tom Ingram. Our subject today is water leak diagnosis. We'll confine our discussion to two potential water leak areas. The front of dash on both N and J car vehicles and the rear compartment area of the J car. Water leaks are often associated with musty odors or dampness in the passenger or luggage compartment. This inconvenience, coupled with the need to bring in the vehicle for repair, often quite soon after purchase, means that it's more important than ever that the leak gets fixed as quickly as possible to assure customer satisfaction. And that's what we'll discuss today. How to find water leaks and how to make the necessary repairs. And as usual, we've got some expert help. Among other guests, we have with us today Mr. Dan Zebula from J and N Body Reliability and Test. Welcome, Dan. Why don't you tell us what you do and then introduce our other guests? Thank you, Tom. I'm a body paint, sealing, and corrosion validation engineer with the Lansing Automotive Division, reliability and test activity. Our other guests, also part of the Lansing Automotive Division, are from our Lordstown Assembly Plant. I'd like for them to introduce themselves and give you a little bit of their background as far as the water leak detection is concerned. Roy? Yes, I'm Roy Brown. I'm a water test quality rep for the trim shop from Lordstown. My main function is to fix and repair water leaks in the trim department. With me today are two other gentlemen, and between the three of us, we have over 60 years of finding, detecting, and repairing water leaks. Phil? Thanks, Roy. Hi, my name is Phil Brady, and I'm a member of the Lordstown Water Test Task Force. And I specialize in the body sealing section of the J-Car. Jack? Thanks, Phil. My name's Jack Keir. I'm also a water test team member. My specialty is paint shop sealing. Welcome, gentlemen, and thanks for joining us today. It looks like we're in pretty knowledgeable hands, so let's talk about water leaks. Where would you like to begin, Dan? Before we start, Tom, I'd like to mention the fact that in addition to the fully equipped J-Car that we'll be using for demonstration, we've also been provided with the J-Car Buck. The buck is simply a visual aid we'll use in order to provide you with a full view of the front and dash and rear compartment areas. We'd like to cover four basic topics in this video. One is to get you familiar with the front of dash and rear compartment, show you the construction and sealing characteristics. We'd like to talk next about water flow paths, how the water works on the different surfaces and where the leaks are most likely to occur. Then we'll get into actual leak detection and last, but not least, uh, some ways of repairing those particular leaks. First of all, we'd like to start with the front of dash. Uh, we'd like to describe, as I said, uh, how the dash is put together. We have a very complex situation in our front of dash. It consists of many metal parts that match and mate with each other. Uh, we attempt to seal all our metal seams with a liquid sealer that is flowed and then brushed over the seams. We have also on the front of dash many mechanical seals. These are classified as grommets and gaskets, and these are peculiar to all the add-ons and pass-throughs that you'll see on the front of dash, electrical connections, HVAC systems, and the like. In order to detect water leaks, it's good to have an understanding of water flow paths on the front of dash. We'd like to talk first about how the water gets there, and secondly, once it's there, where does it go? Our main concern for water getting there is in rainstorms. Number two are car washes, and these are pretty equivalent as far as the damage that they can cause. A third concern that we might have is splash from the road, although this is very negligible. The water would normally cascade down the windshield area and into the plenum. It leaves the plenum by the virtue of two rubber flaps in the front of dash and then cascades down the uh, dash itself. Now, there are many things in the way of this water flow, sealed areas, add-ons with the mechanical seals, and there are these areas that will provide uh, the greatest chance of a water leak. Uh, while the car is in motion, we also can have water pushed back off the hood, back into the plenum, and perhaps drain back into the front of dash itself over the wiper mortar bracket. Dan, say a customer brings a car in and complains about a water leak. What do you do? Well, Tom, we've come to uh, perhaps the most difficult part of the process, and that is finding the leak. Uh, the first thing that happens is when the customer comes through the door. 
Uh, I will let Roy take it from there as to what approach he takes. Roy? Yeah, Dan, it's very important that the customer information be written down and passed on to the technician that's going to do the repair so that they know where to start. If there's dampness, if there's an odor, whatever there is that will help you find a leak. For the technician, then they should go to that area of the car and pull back the trim to find the dampness or the odor or whatever the customer complaint is. Then try to go to the corresponding part on the opposite side of the car where the water is entering and look for the obvious. Things like grommets that aren't pulled through and snapped into place, maybe nuts that aren't tightened down on a sealing gasket properly, maybe a real obvious sealer skip. Sometimes without putting water on the car, you can find those things much easier. What do we do then, Roy? Okay, now, Dan, we need to go into the basic diagnostic process where you would start with a water hose on the bottom part of the car and follow back your flow. The reason for that is that you will find where the leak comes in immediately. It's very important that you don't just flood the car with water and find a leak because you don't know where it started. By working from the bottom up and letting gravity be your friend, then you're going to know exactly where the leak is, isolate it, and only have to put a small amount of sealer on it. And it's also very important to have somebody on the inside of the car with a flashlight watching for the dampness from the water as you're running the hose. Are there some occasions uh, on the inspection for a water leak where you can actually see a water path uh, on the metal? Definitely. Uh, okay, now uh, on a new car, I would imagine that would be a pretty clear water path, a dampness, a streak. So you might have a very good indicator there, a path that leads you right back to the hole. Right, and that's very good to look for the dampness in the car. Say, say as you have a front end leak, which is what we're talking on, and you pull the carpet back and you find a dampness, a lot of times you can see the streams of water that have come down, even if they're very minute and just come down a teardrop at a time. And that'll really help you on the small leaks. Are there any other devices uh, that you could uh, employ in order to uh, help you find leaks? I'd like to point out that the windshield leaks and all glass leaks are easy to detect because you can have your technician on the inside with an air hose and your person on the outside with a water hose following around the glass and anywhere you blow an air bubble you know you have a leak. That seal is dry, there's no way air should blow through it. Where it blows through you can seal it. You can also do that easily by pulling down gently on the headliner and sealing it from the inside. It's not always necessary to pull the lace out of the windshield or to pull the windshield out of the car. Sometimes you will have to use a, a shower stand to simulate a rain and at that point you are putting the water on the top of the car and allowing it to cascade over the whole car. Then when you find a leak you should reverse your process and go back with your hose from the bottom up. Yeah, the uh, water stand that you're referring to I believe is uh, covered in the body service manual. It serves the purpose very well in duplicating rainfall and uh, it can be built with I would imagine a nominal cost and it's quite essential in producing uh, the situation under which the customer experienced the leak. Anything? Dan, can I interrupt? Sure. Uh, one thing that came to mind, uh, time doesn't always show a grommet leak like a ECM or a J-Box leak. Sometimes you need more than just your four or five minutes. The hood weather stripping and the dough balling or sealing area above that are designed to keep the water in the plenum area and out the drains. They're not designed to let the water escape and get right on the harnesses. So if it is getting on the harness, it's important to look at that area and see if you can't route the water back in the normal drain process. There are certain uh, items on the front of the dash, and uh, probably most specifically the uh, ECM and the J-block area, which is an electrical connector, not really designed to be a bathtub stopper. And uh, if you flood those areas, I can almost guarantee you that you can uh, make them leak. There are horizontal seams that can leak and have the tunneling effect. You can actually have water on the inside of the car on the left side where the leak is really on the right side. So it's important to check both sides where the water flows out the normal drains. This would be uh, only in the liquid sealed seams, not, not necessarily grommets and right, a never gasket. In a grommet. Never in a grommet, never in never a gasket, gasket, but with your liquid seam, seams. And you were talking dash to uh, mortar compartment side and the dash to tow pan seam. Correct. Uh, it's a good track in order to get from here yeah. to there. The only place that really can happen is where the engine rail comes together with the floor pan and the firewall. Uh, sometimes I've heard that uh, we can have an electrical component failure underneath the dash. This probably are due to leaks that are very small in nature 
and uh, really wouldn't uh, exhibit a dampness or a wetness in the carpet. Boy, it sure plays havoc with that electrical module. Uh, would you like to elaborate on where that water might be coming from and what electrical components are involved? Yeah, Dan, any time that a technician has a water or a corrosion type problem on an electrical connector of any kind, he should always look for dampness in the deadener, possibly underneath the carpet. One of the areas that maybe we didn't stress quite strongly enough is at the base of the A-post, the windshield area. There's a lot of parts that come together there and they're difficult to seal. And any small minute hole will allow water to drip. Sometimes it drips on a wire connection. Sometimes it'll drip on the little sending unit for your key buzzer and it'll short those things out. And if that is shorted out, the technician should look for dampness. And if so, he should send the car to the water test technician to be repaired properly. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, it doesn't show up as a water leak issue, but uh, it'll continue to show up as an electronic module of some sort issue. Right, and I can guarantee it'll come back as an electrical problem again if the water leak is not repaired. Okay, Roy, now we've determined where the leak is at. And our next step, obviously, is to repair it. Repair it in such a manner that the customer isn't going to come back for a return visit. Uh, what is the next step that we take? And Explain the whole process to us. Okay, Dan, it's real important that our technician have a clean area to apply the sealer. So once they've found a defect area, they should find a way to clean it. And it's just a common sense thing. If it's a hard to reach area, you can put some towel or cloth on a small stick or something to clean it off a brush. Some of the areas are hard to get at. The easy areas, of course, you just wipe off with a towel. What's the real reason for a clean surface? Well, we've just got done flooding this car with water, so the sealing services are all damp. We want to get the area dry, and of course the sealer won't stick to dirt and grease. So after we've found the area, cleaned it, then we want to make sure that any fasteners are tight. If it's around a J-Box or C3, we don't want to start putting a liquid sealer around there and then have to tighten it up. Okay, so once you've got the, the bolts and fasteners tightened, then you apply the sealer. Correct. to the area that you've defined Correct. as uh, the root cause for the leak. It's very important that a liquid sealer is smoothed out. A lot of liquid sealers, as they come out of a tube or out of a pump gun, will have air in them. So it's, it's important that a, even in a small area that you take your finger or whatever as a pliable, a small brush, a little putty knife, and smooth over it just to make sure that there's no air. Because if there's an air bubble in there, then water's going to get in that bare bubble and maybe find the same defect. Okay. Uh after uh, that particular step, uh, uh, obviously you'd want to retest the vehicle to determine that your fix repair was in fact uh, effective and, and did the job for you. Correct, Dan. And if the dealer has a shower stand, this is an excellent time. After the sealer is dry enough to be tested, that you put the car under the shower stand and let it run on the whole car just to make sure you didn't create a false leak or have possibly a second leak. Uh, maybe, Roy, you'd like to talk a little bit now about any special tools uh, that you've uh, developed down at Lordstown to help you to get some of the areas on the front of dash. Uh, that is a pretty uh, tight engine compartment, and uh, it's not the easiest thing to uh, access the front of dash area. So have you developed anything that might yeah, help you? The repairmen down uh, at the plant have found that a lot of times we will use a Plues oiler type pump gun. Uh, the dealers may not want something this sophisticated, may not be able to get it. You can use the same thing out of a tube. But what we've done in hard to reach areas is just devise a simple hose that would extend your gun and let you read hard to reach areas. By it being flexible, you can put it anywhere. And we'll be uh, demonstrating some of this as far as going up behind the hood uh, hinges, going down on the engine rails. Uh, this again, if the dealership doesn't have this or want to get into something so sophisticated, you can actually apply this to a tube, like a tube of toothpaste, which a lot of sealers come in tubes. You can just screw that right on the end. Yeah. It's plastic, it'll give a little bit, it's uh, very nice to use. Uh, to clean an area, you might use something uh, strong, you know, a little piece of tubing, wrap some cloth around it. We have uh, dum dum type sealers that are. Uh, heavy. We, we, we don't like to use that too well except to seal water out uh, of a compartment to use it like a dam. Th this, these type sealers are really good. They eat into the uh, paint a little bit and they make a good contact. There's some cautions to be used when uh, you're dealing with a plues oil or something about setting up the adhesive setting up in it. 
Right. Uh, Dan, we have this. This is the type of gun that w we really like because it has a small tip on the end. They come with these uh, little wire. You can make a wire. And all you got to do is keep the air from getting into the sealer. It works really good. By having a small nozzle like that, you can also get it in very small areas without scratching the car or doing a lot of damage. You have to take the nozzle off so that you can put the hose on. And of course, you use that in an area that's hard to reach. If you're using a gun like this, when you're done with it, if you're doing a lot of water test repair and you like this setup and you want to keep it, you can easily take some sealer and just seal off the end of it, such as this, to, just to keep air from getting yeah. to it. Doesn't sound like there's any real trick in repairing a leak. The hardest part is finding it and then just common sense on getting the sealer to the right spot and, and you should be all set. Now that we've taken care of the front of the dash, let's move to the back of the car and discuss the rear compartment area. There will be some similarity in the discussion, but certain issues are specific to the rear compartment which will be evident to you. Again, we will address the construction and sealing techniques, water flow paths, detection and repair. The rear compartment consists of several metal panels, the resulting seams of which are protected against water intrusion by the application of a liquid sealer. Mechanical seals, gaskets and grommets are also employed. You'll find them used in tail lamp assemblies, wiring harnesses, fasteners for attaching spoiler and luggage racks, and the largest gasket of all, the deck lid weather strip. As with the front of dash, understanding the water flow will help you in your leak detection. Water flowing off the backlight will settle in the weather strip gutter and eventually exit above the bumper. During this time, the metal seams and weather strip carrier will be underwater. If the volume of water is great, as experienced during heavy range of car washes, the gutter will be completely submerged. This will then test the seal of the weather strip bulb to the deck lid. Road splash is more of a concern in the rear compartment. This is because the wheelhouse area is part of the rear compartment construction. Backlight and quarter windows should not be overlooked because certain leaks will show up in the rear compartment. I'd like to have Roy explain the process uh, in identifying leak locations. Roy? Yeah, Dan, the uh, diagnosis process on the trunk is very similar to the front, but you have a real advantage in the trunk because you can get to both sides of the seams. So your air hose really comes into play and you only need one person. In the trunk area, though, you can easily run the air hose yourself on the inside of the seam, run the water on the outside of the seam. Very easy to pick up the defect. The water will bubble. It'll show you the exact place to put the sealer. Again, all you have to do is clean it and seal it and retest it. This area can be easily retested with the water hose. You can find backlight leaks, you can find all the seam leaks, all the liquid sealer leaks. You'll be able to find some of the grommet leaks with the air hose. You do want to look in the spare tire well to see if there's water in there because this car no longer has drains in the trunk at all and any water that collects in there is going to end up in the spare tire well. So under visual that's one place you'd want to look. Uh, Dan brought up something real interesting and we have found dealers doing this when you're looking for this water leak and you're running this flow and you start at the bottom and work your way up with your water hose, you have the deck lid open. So if you have a loose grommet on an air spoiler or a deck lid rack, you're not even checking that area. So it's important to also run that water flow on that uh, deck lid itself. And if the grommets are loose with the deck lid open, a, a small amount of water, you can pick the leak up very easily. Okay, is there ever an occasion uh, where you'd want to check for a leak with the uh, compartment closed and an individual inside the rear compartment? Definitely, Dan. Sometimes the uh, leaks are hard to find, and by putting a person inside the car with a flashlight and running water on it, you can put a little more flow of water on. You don't have to worry about it running over the deck with weather strip. Mm -hmm. Also, in the daylight, with the person inside the trunk, the trunk lid closed and your flashlight off, they can look and see if they can visually see any light coming in around the deck lid. Although most cases, the water does build up on the weather strip, but usually not as high as the weather strip is itself. And most of the leaks that end up in the spare tire well are carrier type deck lid weather strip leaks. Yeah. When that water gets in the outer carrier, it runs on the outside of the flange. And when it hits the deadfall area, gravity pulls it over to the inside of the flange it runs on the inside carrier until it hits a joint in the metal and it runs into the spare tire well. Now we've done a lot to correct that at the factory by changing the process of the deck lid weather strip. We have deck lid weather strips now that have mastic in them and if they're properly seated that won't happen. 
it's very easy that to have just a small area that doesn't have contact and the water can end up in there. Roy, uh, would you like to comment on the, uh, on the sealing versions? Yeah, Dan, it's very important that on any liquid seal seam, like on the front of the car, that you make sure the area is clean and dry before you apply the seal. Or again, you want to wipe the sealer out and make sure there's no air bubbles in it and give it a chance to dry and then retest it with a hose. Would uh, the seams in the rear compartment area, would they be more likely to be repaired from the inside of the trunk as opposed to the outside of the trunk? No, Dan, like on the front of the car, we want to repair all the seams from the outside because we don't want any water trap between the seams. Which, which relates to a corrosion problem down the line. Correct. Something we might have stressed a little harder on the front end of the car. We always want to seal from the outside of the car. We don't want any water trapped in the seam. Okay. How about uh, gaskets, grommets, and the weather strip? The only place we really see water coming through grommets is like the tail light grommet. A lot of times the clip on there needs to be tightened up. The sealer needs to be in. The plant puts sealer around the outside of that to keep the water out of that area. Sometimes there's not enough sealer in there. How about uh, luggage racks, spoilers? Yeah, luggage racks and spoilers that usually are just um, maybe need a little more tightening on the nut. And then in the last and probably one of the most important areas is the, uh, the weather strip itself. Uh, here again, it seems like you can be fooled into thinking you've got the leak because that's where the water came out. Uh, what should they do to make sure they've got uh, the leak corrected there? Right. On the deck lid weather strip, it's very important that the pre-seal, which, which is added to the weather strip before it's applied to the car, is continuous. Any break in that will allow water to start running in those grip fingers. It's also very important, of course, that the weather strip is completely seated to the pinch well flange, and by doing that, you make the mastic adhere to the flange. But to detect that leak, that water ends up in the spare tire well. With the deck lid open and running the water on the weather strip, you can actually see the water coming out and dripping in the back of the car, and it'll run right in. It's under the carrier. It's not over the carrier. Uh, under repair, if you take, uh, I'm going to use this as an example, but if you take a tongue depressor or a stick, and as you're pulling the weather strip off the car and you follow it all the way around the flange, you'll find out the mastic will not make a mess. Would you... Uh recommend for an effective fix to uh, apply mastic around the entire perimeter of the weather strip rather than one section? Right. Where do you think it right. is? We, we would call that pre-seal. The okay. mastic's in the weather strip. The it's going to stay in there and we wouldn't wipe the flange off. Okay. There's going to be some mastic on the flange and some mastic still on the weather strip. We wouldn't touch that. But at the base of the flange, we would take a pre-seal. Some of your rubber to metal type sealers that the dealer has we completely seal that whole per perimeter of the weather strip, and then we'd be ver real careful to make sure the weather strip is seated. Also, Dan, it's important that if the weather strip carrier gets split, that you press it back together. It's a wire, and it's easy to press back together. It's really a pretty easy fix. It's hard to detect, and it fools a lot of people. But with sealer on it and seated, you have a good job and a dry job. Uh, one thing that we uh, didn't touch on uh, was... Uh any leaks from the underside of the car uh, from, a, uh, from a water splash? Uh, do you want to comment on that? Yeah, the uh, wheel wells have a seam in them, and it is possible, even though it's a double and sometimes triple sealed seam, that uh, it could have an opening there and there could be some water splashing up. Uh, again, you wouldn't find a leak when you run the hose on the car. If you take the hose under the wheel well and put some force on it, then you would find it. Again, if you find that type of leak, you want to seal it from both sides. You want to seal that type of leak from outside in the fender well and again from inside the car. Okay, but again, that's not as prevalent as one would uh, expect. Uh, very rare. Okay. Uh, Roy, before we leave the subject, uh, one last thought on anything that you might have missed uh, earlier. You know, Dan, in the trunk area, there is a leak where running the water in the normal flow pattern would not detect, and that's the gas pocket. You have to run the water on the quarter let it run around the gas pocket area. That gas pocket has an inner seal in it that will, if it fails, let water into the trunk area. Again, just needs cleaned and sealed. Okay. Well, Tom, hopefully this information will prove helpful to the service technicians when dealing with front of dash and rear compartment water leaks.
Thanks, Dan. And our thanks to the water test team from Lordstown for their assistance on this important topic. You're welcome, welcome Tom. Tom. Thanks, Tom. Now, let's turn our attention from repair to headline news. An important personnel change at Pontiac Service makes news headlines this month as Director of Service and Customer Satisfaction, Mr. Jim Murray, becomes Assistant General Sales and Service Manager West. Murray, who will be headquartered in Thousand Oaks, California, will be responsible for activities of Pontiac Zone offices in Los Angeles, San Francisco, and Denver. Murray's replacement, Mr. E. H. Gar Smith, takes over as Director of Service and Customer Satisfaction, heading up the Customer, Technical, and Dealer Assistance Centers, as well as its Dealer Facility Modernization Program. Service managers should make sure their service technicians are up-to-date and familiar with the following service bulletins and campaigns. Bulletin 88-3-33 affects 1982 to 1988 Sunbird models, and 1985 to 1988 Grand Am models. The subject deals with replacement of strut assemblies on these vehicles. While some of the factory original struts had 25 millimeter strut rods, 22 millimeter strut rods are being used when replacement of original struts is called for. See the bulletin for details. Bulletin 90-10-21 deals with a rattling noise located at the front seat pivot bolt of the 1986 to 1990 Sunbird and Grand Am models. It describes simple corrective measures, installation of a shortened pivot bolt and bushing. Be sure to ask your service manager for a copy of Bulletin 90-6-28. It concerns all Pontiac car lines and years and deals with revised procedures for connecting an amp meter to the vehicle while conducting battery electrical drain check procedures. It is also important that technicians be aware of Product Safety Campaign 89-C-08, Front Fuel Feed Hose Assembly. Affected models include the 1988-89 Grand Am models with the Quad 4 engine. It has been determined that the front fuel feed hose assembly could crack or separate at the coupling on the engine end of the hose assembly. This could allow fuel to leak into the underhood area. Consult the campaign bulletin for specific details. Be sure to consult your service manager for copies or information on these bulletins. In order to improve and broaden service response to customers, dealers, and technicians, Pontiac's Customer Assistance Center, Dealer Assistance Center, and Technical Assistance Center have established new working hours. As of January 1990, hours are as follows. Customer Assistance, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., your local time. Dealer Assistance Center hours are from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. local and TAC hours run from 8 a.m. until 6 p.m. local. No longer will the time difference interfere with communications with Pontiac. As stated, all hours are local. That completes the May edition of Headline News. We'll see you next month with more news for technicians from Pontiac Service. And that's Headline News. Be sure and join us next month. Until then, I'm Tom Ingram, and this is the Pontiac Performance Network.